Hello friends, this video on congruence of triangles part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 5. In a squared sheet, draw two triangles of equal areas such that the triangles are congruent, such that the triangles are not congruent. What can you say about their perimeters? Now, it is not necessary that if two triangles have equal areas, they will always be congruent. They can be congruent, but it is not necessary that they will be congruent. So, let us first consider the first scenario. Let us say this is one triangle and we draw another triangle which is exactly identical to the first triangle. So, in this case, if this is triangle ABC and if this is triangle DEF, in this case, the area enclosed by triangle ABC is e equal to the area enclosed by triangle DEF. And since these two triangles are exactly identical, therefore AB is equal to DE, BC is equal to EF and AC is equal to DF. So their corresponding sides and corresponding angles are also equal. Therefore, if you look at their perimeters, what is perimeter? So perimeter of a triangle is nothing but sum of the three sides. So their perimeters will also be same because their sides are equal, right? So AB is equal to DE. So what is perimeter for this triangle? This would be AB plus BC plus CA. Now AB is equal to DE plus BC is equal to EF plus CA is equal to DF. And what is this? This is basically perimeter of triangle DEF. So we can say that perimeter of triangle ABC will be equal to perimeter of triangle DEF. So this is the first case. Now let us look at the second case where we say that we have two triangles which have equal area but they are not congruent. So basically we need to draw two triangles of two different shapes or two different size but their area should be same. And it is very simple to draw such triangles. So let us draw the first triangle as triangle ABC. So what is the area of this triangle? How do you calculate the area of a triangle? So area of a triangle is given by half into base into height. So that means in this case, the area of this triangle would be given, given by half into BC, which is the base into height, which is this height. Right? We have learned about the altitude of a triangle in one of our previous lessons. So this would be the height of the triangle. That is how we get the area of a triangle. Now if we draw another triangle with the same height and we ensure that the length of the base is the same as BC. So we, we ensure that BC, let us name this as DE. So we ensure that BC is equal to DE. Right? And we ensure that this is the height because when we measure the height, this is a perpendicular. So here also we ensure that this is perpendicular and then we join these two ends. So what would be the area of this triangle? The area of this triangle would be half into base into height. Now base and height of this triangle is same as the base and height of this triangle. Therefore they have same areas. So their areas are same. But when you look at congruence, do you think that they will be congruent? They will not be because this is a right angle triangle and this is not a right angle triangle. So there, it is just this side that is BC only BC is equal to DE. Other than that, the two sides are not equal. We also do not know about the angles. So therefore the two triangles are not congruent. What about the perimeter? Now since the two triangles are not congruent, therefore their corresponding sides are also not equal. Therefore, their perimeters will also not be the same. So perimeters for these two triangles would be different. So you see these are the various concepts which I mean which are based on these simple concepts but like a, a slightly twisted questions. Like this question was a slightly twisted question where you need to actually think about it, like how to solve this. So it, it says that two triangles have equal areas. Now you might feel that okay, equal area means everything will be equal, but that's not the case because area of a triangle is dependent only on the base and the height of the triangle. Everything else can be different, right? Okay, so let's look at question number six. If triangle ABC and triangle PQR are to be congruent, name one additional pair of corresponding parts. Which criteria did you use? So in this triangle, what is given? It is given that angle B is equal to angle Q. 
because both of them are 90 degree. The other criteria, it, it doesn't talk about the length of the hypotenuse. Therefore, we cannot say anything about the RHS criteria. So the next given criteria is that angle C is equal to angle R. So that means we have the given criteria is that there are two angles of one triangle are equal to the corresponding angles of the other triangle. So the only criteria that we can use here is ASA which has two angles and one side. So the additional criteria that we would need is this side BC is equal to this side QR. So if BC is equal to QR then we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by ASA criteria. So please do not confuse yourself. Now many a times what happens is the moment uh, children see right angle triangle, they feel that only RHS criteria can make them congruent. Now that is not true. A right angle triangle can also become congruent by ASA criteria or SAS criteria. So it depends on what are the criteria conditions which are given in the question because you can't assume that the length of the hypotenuse are equal for both the triangles. We can't assume that. So whatever values are given depending on those values we have to determine that based on which criteria the two triangles are congruent. Question number 7. Explain why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED. Okay. So let, let's match the conditions which are given in these two triangles. So in, in triangle ABC and triangle FED. So it is given that angle B is equal to angle E because both are 90 degree. It is also given that angle A is equal to angle F. Right? So angle A is equal to angle F. So we have been given about two angles. Right? And what is given there is one side which is BC is equal to DE. So do you think that it would be congruent by ASA because you have two angles and one side? This no, because here the angles which are given, these are these two angles and this side is not included by these two angles, right? So if we want this to be congruent by ASA, which is the other angle that should be included? It should be this angle because this side is included by this angle and this angle, right? Now, when you look at this triangle, we see that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degree, right? So we can say that angle C is equal to 180 degree minus angle A plus angle B, right? Similarly, in this diagram, what would be the value of angle D? So angle D will be equal to 180 degree minus the sum of angle E plus angle F. Now, in the question it is given that angle A is equal to angle F. So here and instead of angle A we can write it as angle F. Instead of angle B we can write it as angle E. So what do we get? We get angle C is equal to 180 degree minus angle F plus angle E. And what is this? 180 degree minus angle F plus angle E is nothing but angle D. So therefore we prove that angle C is equal to angle D. So here I have proved it mathematically so it might uh, seem complex but basically what I tried to say is since the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degree and two angles are already equal to each other then the third angle will also be equal to each other. So we can say that angle C is equal to angle D. Now not with this one so this doesn't valid hold valid here. So this is true, this is your A, this is your S and this is your A. So with these three conditions you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED by ASA criteria. So you see it is very important that you understand that whichever criteria you are applying like for example here it was ASA. For ASA we actually needed the side which is included by the two angles. 
So here the angles which included this side involved angle C. So first we proved that angle C is equal to angle D and then we have proved the congruency by ASA criteria. So I hope this is clear to you. So this lesson is going to be very, very important as you uh, go to your higher classes, you study more mathematics, con the concept of congruence is going to help you long term. So please concentrate on the concepts. Please try to solve more and more questions so that, you know, you gain confidence on the concepts. And I hope that this lesson would have helped you. See you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.